Welcome back. Now it's time to form the south wall. We're experimenting with a variety of different methods to build this house. For the south wall, the plan is to start with steel studs and use that to hold rigid insulation as formwork for shotcrete on the outside. Later, we'll come back and also insulate between the steel studs. Brody is bolting wood to the tops of the steel I-beams, and I'm using a cutting torch to make some extra bolt holes on that last I-beam. You'll see what that's all for later. Back to the steel studs, the first step is to attach the track to the footing. Instead of using a full track, I just cut up segments of a track and then attach them with tabcons. Those little segments are spaced 16 inches apart. If those footings look unusual, that's because they are. They are deep and wide to carry the earth load from the roof. Also note that the bottom of the wall will end up below ground and frost protected. Jumping over to the southwest corner and I'm attaching the front door buck. Primarily I want it to be plumb and square, but I also want to make sure it doesn't move. Now I'm welding little brackets to the bottom of the steel. The galvanized steel studs can then be attached to the brackets. We hang them plumb and then we attach them to the footing. Here come the window bucks. These get attached to the steel for now, but eventually it will be the concrete, the shotcrete, that really holds them in place. With the wood attached to the bottom of the steel, it was pretty easy to mount the window bucks by clamping them in place and then adding screws. Then we attached the steel studs after the fact. This sequence made it certain that it was a perfect fit every time. Here it is again from the southeast side. You can see the clamps from the outside. After it all goes together, the assembly is actually very rigid. Steel studs are much stronger than 2x4s, and they're positioned between steel and concrete. The screws I am using are also much stronger than nails, and the window bucks are treated 2x8s. Okay, moving up to the second level. I basically needed to build little curved walls that started 10 feet up. All the I-beams have the same curvature, so Brody's using the beam on the left as a template to lay out the wood header. It's basically wood segments cut at an angle and screwed together, but then we use the template to mark them and then cut them to a nice curve. Meanwhile, I'm setting up some more steel studs. Once Brody has cut the curve into the top header, we trim it to the right length and then carry it up to attach to the top of the steel studs. The middle one will be easier to see. Here comes the middle one. It didn't quite fit the first time, so we took it down so we could shave off a little bit from one of the ends. The third time and it's just right. Now I'm filling in the studs in the spaces under the windows. Again, wherever possible I'm going with a 16 inch spacing, just to make it easier for the insulation later. This next bit is fun. I needed to make some wood arches for the ends of the small radial vaults. I had worked out the length and angles needed to cut these blocks to get the radius that I wanted. You can see my stop block jig that makes it easy to get just the right length. Then I use a pocket hole jig to make some nice holes for the screws. And then I assemble with glue and screws. The camera pan is just because I was vibrating the table and the tripod was slowly turning, falling off the table. Of course, all the wood is treated as per code because it will be in contact with concrete. Next, we need a wood ring for a circular window buck. We held them together with a ratchet strap while the glue set and I also added screws. Then a second ring around that made of 2x8s.
And then I cut the blocks for the second small wood arch, added the pocket holes, and assembled the first layer. Like last time, I used an offset double layer with lots of glue to form a pretty strong arch of a very specific radius. And then I used that template board, it's treated plywood, to help tie everything together. Here's the assembly outside. I started with a treated plywood template and attached the segmented arch to it. Then we lifted up the very heavy window buck into place and attached it. Then we attached all the wood to the rebar behind it so it would be rigid. If you want photos of how we did that, you'll have to check out the website at www.homeintheearth.com. Now it's time to skin the framework. My plan is to use 2-inch XPS rigid insulation for this. But first, I put a layer of house wrap just to avoid any issues with the inspector. The key bit here is just to make sure that it all overlaps correctly. Tight little corners always take much more time than they should. To attach the insulation to the steel studs, we used galvanized, self-tapping metal screws and large galvanized lath washers and, you guessed it, galvanized lath. I don't want any of this to rust. More house wrap? It felt like I was wrapping the house up as a gift as carefully as I could. Then we put one more layer of wood headers across the top of the steel. This will make it easier to attach the roof trusses later. Again, these headers are bolted down directly to the I-beam. At this stage I've only put in a few screws. Sherry and the boys came back later and made sure that there was a screw every 8 inches along each stud. Jumping ahead to the second level, again same as the first, but working on ladders. At the start of this scene, I'm trying to get some nests out of the I-beam. Some birds had gone in really deep into that section behind the shotcrete. I ended up needing to vacuum them out. Then I could complete this corner. The last tricky bit was forming the outer edges of the radial vaults. I needed these to be insulated and to contain the concrete during the shoot. I also needed them to include wood attachment points for when I mounted the windows later. I considered making them with 2x8s like the smaller arch ends, but the compound miters were going to be tricky and the assembly was going to be heavy. I ended up doing something similar but with layers of thinner treated plywood instead. Once in place, I attached this to the rebar and then the insulation was attached to the outside of that. Then we finished up this last segment of wall.
jump ahead to the installation and then finally putting up the last bits of lath. Okay, so we're wrapping up the south wall formwork. Again, remember, this isn't the wall. The wall itself will be concrete on top of this formwork. But first, we gotta finish the formwork for the underside of those radial vaults. That'll be the next video.